Blessings everyone, this is Natasha. If you have not yet visited my channel, it's called Secure Future with Natasha Misha. I have Facebook, I have Instagram, and I have YouTube. So, um, just wanted to come on and say thank you for those who have subscribed. Continue to subscribe because I'm trying to grow the channel. The more people can hear this, the better it will be. And the more the word will get out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come on really, really quick and just talk about what's on my heart and we'll pray real quick. Father God, I thank you so much for every opportunity that you give me to be able to come and speak your heart, my heart, <laughs> and to help enlighten and encourage and empower, um, all of us so that we can grow into the things of you i pray father that i would decrease and you would increase and that you would bring forth what you want me to say in jesus name amen okay so uh holy spirit have your way i didn't come with that much of a script but i did come with some scripture because um i never wanted to be what I say, I always want it to be what the Lord says. And I always want to point you back there because that's where the authority is. The authority is not in me. The authority is in our Savior, Lord and Jesus Christ. So, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, again, I got another email. So I figure if every time I get an email when they're trying to convince me that abortion is good and I come on and talk about how abortion is bad, that eventually we'll get the point across, right? But yeah, it's so funny because the message said about dem democratic and something, something, and all my eyes saw was demonic. It was the weirdest thing. They were saying you got to sign to support the Democratic thing to save Roe versus Wade. And they said Democratic and all I saw was demonic. And I know that that was like the Lord trying to let me know to come and let you guys know how the agenda of abortion is so demonic. The, um, the deception of abortion is so demonic. And... You know, I said this the other day in another video where Isaiah 520 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that puts darkness for light and light for darkness, that puts bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know, the Lord is telling us, don't be deceived. And for those that are being deceived, woe be unto you who are calling things good when it's really evil. And we have gotten into this mindset in our society where people are definitely, totally desensitized to what the truth is. But the Lord is calling us back to the truth, is calling us back to wake up to what was being done to us as a people and bringing us back to a place of holiness and purity, which is possible. But the main thing to know is abortion is wrong. An abortion, abortion is murder. Plain and simple. They'll call it health care. It is not health care. There's nothing healthy about killing an unborn baby. There's nothing caring about killing an unborn baby. It is wrong. It is murder. It's a huge sin. It's actually a crime right? But they're not making it seem like it's a crime because, you know, there's some justification behind it. And no matter how you flip it, it's not pleasing to God. Deuteronomy 5 and 17 says, you shall not murder, period. <laughs> um, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but if an alive person is involved with an alive person, they're going to make another alive person. They're not going to make a dead person. So at conception, your baby is alive. So 
uh, the whole idea is that we wasn't formed yet or whatever the justification is behind that. It's an alive baby and when you abort it, you're killing it. Exodus 23, 7 says, have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death for I will not acquit the guilty. So it tells you do not put an innocent or honest person to death. That baby is innocent. That baby deserves to live. That baby has a destiny and a future to complete. So when you now abort, you take the life away from this baby. That's taking a, that's taking the life of an innocent person. That's murder. Leviticus 24, 17 says, anyone who takes the life of a human being is to be put to death. Imagine if every time somebody gets caught having an abortion, that they turn around and say, okay, well, now that you thought that was a great idea, now you have to die. Wouldn't that be terrible? I think that would be so terrible. And I'm telling you, it's not an easy decision to make, but our society makes it such an easy decision to make now. And because of that, 64 million, actually the Lord said it's over 64 million babies have been killed because of justifying it through Roe versus Wade. I do not support it. You know, they're sending me these emails, sign the petition. No, I'm not signing no petition. In fact, every time I see the petition, I just want to just pray, pray some more, pray again, pray louder to overturn this, this God forsaken law that has allowed the death of over 64 million babies. A lot of people are saying, well, now you're putting women at risk. You're putting women at risk because now they won't be able to have abortions. Why don't they not put themselves at risk? Make a choice. You do have a choice. You have a choice to not get pregnant. You have a choice to make better decisions. I mean, save the baby. Save yourself. Because the, the repercussions of an abortion is not even easy. You know, the physical, mental, emotional, the spiritual things that are associated with it. You know, it's not even worth it. So... Every opportunity I get, I'm going to come on and just talk about how much God loves you and how much God loves your baby, you know. And if you resort to living a life that is pure and holy, you won't have to worry about having an abortion. You won't have to worry about dealing with the consequences of abortion. You know, it is possible to have an uh, abortion-free nation yes it is it is definitely possible if we go back to old school hmm, sex before said no sex before marriage sex at marriage time no fornication no free-for-alls right that would help alleviate a lot of the issues that we're having with the unplanned pregnancies and stds and all of these things you know even levels of depression because when you sleep with someone you become part of them and when they rip themselves away from you because they change their mind or they want to go on to do something else that leaves an emotional attachment and then when that person is gone that is an attachment that is now kind of like detaching but not all the way so that causes sadness or you know some some ill feelings that kind of linger with you until you deal with it. There are a lot of things associated with, you know, sex outside of marriage that causes, you know, a lot of um, mental and physical issues that could be avoided. You know, God planned everything the way he planned it in terms of marriage and then sex and then children because that's how he wanted it to be and he knew that there was a blessing and there was a covering that was attached to it so true things are not the way it used to be but once we moved away from that it left us open to doing things our own way which took away the covering and the blessings that is attached to doing it god's way and 
that's how we ended up having all of these babies that are being aborted, all of these depressed people, all these sad people, you know, because there's um, a void, you know, I would say. I would say there's a void. I'm not a doctor. But, you know, I've dealt with depression for a very long time. And I know about having an emptiness inside you that you can't fill because you've, you know, kind of attached yourself to so many different things that, you know, you would have to get delivered from, which I did. And that's what ended up helping me. But when society is telling you, you know, kill your baby, kill your baby, you'll feel better. That's a lie. You know, um, have sex and worst kind of worse, you can just kill your baby. You'll be okay. You're not okay, you know. So it's murder. And I just really want to always debunk what they're making seem sound so good and make it sound so it's, you know, it's in style and it's the way to go. No, it's not the way to go. And the Lord wants so much more for you because he loves you so very much. He loves your baby in the event you did happen to you know get in a predicament where you did end up with an unplanned pregnancy is definitely not the end of the world the answer is not abortion keep your baby your baby is a gift from god in the event you cannot keep your baby what you could do is adopt you know i just read about safe havens um, that's an amazing program that helps women have their babies and anonymously give the baby up without the paperwork or anything and then the baby's in a safe place. The mom gets to go on with her life but the baby gets to live which is the blessing. Just remember also whatever decision you make God loves you, loves you, loves you. If you did have to have an abortion he loves you. All you have to do is Ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He will heal you and he will help you. Okay, don't feel so convicted that you feel like you cannot go back to your father who loves you because he does love you. And if you did have to have an abortion for whatever reason, you can definitely ask him to forgive you and he will. He will. His word says it in 1 John 1 and 9. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's it. No strings attached. Just confess and he'll forgive you, period. That's the kind of God we serve. He loves us. He loves us so very much. And he's calling for us to live the way he wants us to live because it's so important to him because he knows how he designed it. His plans for us are good, good plans, not evil plans. You know, he wants us to have hope. He wants us to have and reach our expected end. That is the hope of the Father that we serve. So they're telling you that, you know, this is better for you and that is better for you. It's better for you to go back to the Word of God and let the Word guide you into the truth. Because the Word says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. We need to get out of this mindset that the uh, the governors or the the politicians or the government is who tells us what to do no we belong to a father who loves us with an everlasting love and he wants us to hear him he wants us to follow him because he has great plans for us and our families so if you had an abortion just ask for forgiveness he will forgive you ask him to lead you in the right direction he will lead you in the right direction you know if you're in a in a relationship that is not going to lead into anything you know pure and holy then let it go it's not worth holding on to something that's going to cause you to sin again you know and what else would we say dad what else would we say yeah he just loves us so much and he just wants the best for us and we've been so lied to in a society that let us think that you know you can just do whatever you want and then there's no consequences there are consequences you know but we have a loving father who will forgive us and who will get us through it all so that is definitely a consolation so if you get the petition that says um the 
democratic people or the demonic people want you to sign their petition to save Roe versus Wade? The answer is no. We do not want to save it. We want it to reverse and we want to give the babies a chance to come into this world and make their contributions just like the, the justice people, you know, the Supreme Court justice people, they got to go to school and become judges so that they're in such a powerful position. You know, your baby has those type of um, destinies too. They can be a judge, they could be a lawyer, they could be a doctor, they can be a mom and a dad you know every baby is conceived by God for God you know it's a miracle it's a gift from God and he wants you to be able and even in the worst of circumstances you know I know a lot of people are talking about rape and all these other things and I understand that but I've known a lot of cases where women have had you know those type of situations and they've had their babies and they were able to heal and love their babies and so and it's at that point later in life you realize how God uses every circumstance for his good you know it says it in Romans I think 8 28 all things work to the, for the foot of good you know all things work together for our good so yeah i'll definitely be back on i hope you like share and subscribe leave me a comment i'd love to hear your comments and um i didn't do a live because where i am this reception is so not so great so it's probably going to take a long time for this thing to upload but i'll be able to put it on a youtube and i think i'm going to put it on my secure future facebook page and my secure future instagram page so be sure to go and like subscribe and follow all of the above because we want to save babies that's what this channel is about securing the future of the babies the mommies and the daddies we need to change our mindset so we can know that what God wants for us is way better than what society is telling us that we can have. We can have so much more. Okay? So, if you have not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, be sure to do that tonight. That's the best thing you could ever do. All you have to do is say a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I know that you died for me on the cross for my sins. Forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and Savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. That's it. Very simple prayer. All you got to do is say it with your mouth out loud <laughs> and he'll come into your heart, into your life. He will be your Lord and you would have the best life ever. The best life ever. Not easy. I didn't say easy, but he will be with you every step of the way and it will definitely be an adventure of a lifetime. And I'll definitely be back on, don't know when, but um, whenever the Lord leaves me, leads me, I'll come on. So God bless you. Father, I thank you so much for even being with me <laughs> to do this word. I thank you, Lord God, that it will reach exactly who it's supposed to reach. And I thank you that we are working, Father God, diligently to secure the future of these unborn babies and they will live. We're declaring and we're decreeing, Father God, that they will live and they will not die. And they will declare the works of the Lord. They will grow up, Father God, to be able to complete the destiny, Father, that you have already preordained for them. So we're speaking life to every unborn baby, Father God. We're speaking hope hope to every mom that is kind of trying to figure out what's next and we're just speaking your peace father god over the land praying also for the fear of god to fall over this land like never before i thank you lord that you're willing your ways will come to pass and i declare not to create our kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven amen in jesus mighty name okay good people so i kept it short i didn't drag it out and um I will definitely be back on soon. God bless you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.